Sunday morning, everybody. It feels like forever since I've done a vlog. I've been posting a lot of the dog videos lately, but in terms of like a vlog type video, it's been a while. Um, we have a lot going on, a lot moving, as some of you know, which is actually what I think the last vlog was, was moving. Is I don't really count the road trip back to St. Vincent's as one because that was like us just driving. It wasn't really like a vlog video. But in terms of vlog video, I think it was the moving one where I was discussing like where we were to with the process. A lot of dog videos going up because we did get a Siberian Husky puppy and he is adorable. Absolutely adorable. Still learning. He's still young. Um, I'm going to go over different types of methods we've been trying to use in terms of training and stuff. I posted one video. I can put it down in the description below of us trying to train him in terms of biting watched a lot of youtube videos saying about people using the muzzle method i don't really like it where you pretty much hold the dog's snout closed after they bit and say no biting or no i didn't really like it he seemed very squirmy he didn't seem a fan of it he almost seemed to panic so i stepped away from that method for the no biting this is the only method i'm going to discuss in this video because like i said i'm going to leave like the training video of what we've been doing with him for another video but um we just decided to do the point no technique and it's been working so that just works for our dog and what works for him but anyway um yeah so where do i begin i guess i'll start with the accident that happened here a few weeks ago i'll put in a quick clip i'm gonna try to cut out the cussing in that video but anyway <laughs> It was really, really late at night. We were just chilling in bed, relaxing, and we heard this loud bang. And I was like, what was that? And I was like, I don't know, probably down the road or something. We didn't really make much of it. Then all of a sudden we heard his mother come out of her room screaming at the top of her lungs. Oh my goodness, he hit the SUV. She came running out. So Ryan went out to see what was on the go. I followed and I just took my camera just in case because you never know, especially nowadays, your best friend when it comes to accidents is footage because for the cops, for insurance purposes, it's just the first thing that clicks into my mind is, okay, like grab the camera just in case. But by the time I got out of there, he was already back, back out of the driveway and he was heading up the road, like flying and I couldn't really get nothing, no license plate because of how dark it was. But anyway, yeah, they still haven't caught him. That was a few weeks ago, but it first started out, he came down the road first he sideswiped the neighbor's vehicle because they were parked on the side of the road the mirror and everything on the driver's side of his vehicle was completely obliterated and he backed into the driveway and slammed into ryan's parents vehicle that was parked in their driveway drove it up over the flower bed got a huge hole in the back from the trailer hitch as well all the front the undercarriage is damaged a lot of damage on the front underneath and under the hood so there's that they had to bring it out to get it evaluated by insurance the cops showed up asked us questions what we've seen and what i'll show you the video here right quick i'm going to throw it in here now of just him speeding up the road and ours is a by road speed limits here are supposed to be i think on the by roads here 40 and he was flying but yeah, so here's that clip. <laughs> and anyway, that was that. And their vehicle got hit. Back to the house process. Everything was just moving along fine. Then we had to deal with CMHC. Down below was what CMHC stands for. You can Google it, see what it's all about, but pretty much what they do is they have the final say in terms of mortgaging and closing on a home. Everything was looking good. Thought we were going to move in October 1st. It still might look like that, but the date might go a little further depending. We had to get an appraisal in, so we did that. The appraiser came in, checked out the home. It was pretty much the appraiser to cover us and to cover the bank. So to make sure we weren't paying more than what the actual value of the home was worth and the bank was being covered. 
So we had that done. They went in. There's a little bit of the downstairs floor that's actually just like dirt. It's not cement or anything. It's just a little dirt room because that used to be Ryan's grandfather's wood room. CMHC had, I guess, a bit of an issue with that. They went back to the appraiser, wanted to know how much of that floor was dirt, how much was cement, because all the rest down there is cement. It's just that one little room. That held us up for two or three weeks. Didn't get no response. I'm sorry, the washer's going in the background. My apologies if that's like annoying background noise, but I, I really gotta get the laundry done. It was a busy weekend. But yeah, um, they had an issue with that. Appraiser was going back and forth with them. We we're waiting to hear back. Okay, is it approved? Is the floor not approved? Like, can we move on to the next step? Because we couldn't send off the mortgage instructions to our lawyer until that was done. So they came back, that was all good. And then we got the appraisal price and the appraisal price was pretty much what we were offering to pay for the home because they were asking a little more, but then we went in with another amount because they were saying the other amount they first came with was how much the home was worth. Found out it actually wasn't worth that. And the appraiser came in with the price we went in negotiating with and thought we were getting a good deal on. So we went back to then the sellers, Ryan's and negotiated for a lower price, which they agreed upon, which was phenomenal and amazing and awesome and great. So then we had to, because you get that done, you have to do an amendment. So the lawyer, Ryan and Ryan's aunt, all had to go and sign this amendment. That has to go to the bank. The bank has to send it off to their lawyers. Then we had to wait on that. So now we're waiting to get that back and then sent off to the lawyer. So then the lawyer can have all the mortgage information it requires to then begin closing on the home for all the stuff he needs. So hopefully we're in still October 1st. I don't know. It's kind of like, I'm really hoping for it because I want to be in for our anniversary, which is October 2nd. That's our wedding anniversary and our, I guess, dating anniversary. So I'm hoping to get in by then. Fingers crossed. Fingers really crossed, guys, for that. Next, more news. So Ryan might be buying a Legend race car for next season. Here's actually a quick video of him <laughs> driving the Legend race car for the first time. It's adorable. Like, my heart melted. I'm really hoping this pans out and he's able to make payments on this car. We're trying to just negotiate back and forth with Ryan's friend who owns the car as of right now and fingers crossed. But yeah, I do have a video of this uploaded already of Ryan driving the car, but I just want you guys to see this real quick clip. I just, I love it. It melts my heart and I really hope I can do this for him. He does so much, so much for me and him and for our two dogs which I have more news about that as well. But yeah, like, I really hope this pans out good. But yeah, here's that quick clip. again and yeah like I said I just everything he does everything he he works so hard I never met anyone I'm sorry like a kudos to my stepdad for how much he worked as we were children and stuff like that but nobody has worked as hard as my husband I am hands down I know for a fact my husband works his butt off there's times it makes me kind of sad because I want him home to spend time with me and with our dogs. And then there's other times I have to remind myself, listen, this is him working for 
the roof over your head for this new home. Uh, we wouldn't be able to even do this if it wasn't for how much he works and stuff like that. But hopefully when Christmas rolls around and when we're in the house, him with work, he starts to step back a little bit and just take a bit of a breather and just enjoy life and enjoy everything he's worked for. But like I said, without him working the way he does, we wouldn't have the things we have and it makes me so grateful so appre so appreciative and just he's amazing absolutely amazing but yeah so i'm hoping he gets a sledging car he deserves it i hope i can do whatever i can on my end to make sure because usually financing i'm pretty good at like balancing out where the money goes what costs what what's left over spending saving stuff like that so Hopefully I can do the bit on my end that I can to make sure he's able to get that car. Next up on the list is the dogs. Yeah, so we ended up getting a Siberian Husky, as you guys know, a little while ago. Lots of videos of him up right now and there will be more. We have that dog. We have Jersey. We are actually getting another dog, which is on Bell Island. We have to take the ferry across to go get her. It's a female. It's a German Shepherd Lab mix. She was just born on Friday past around 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. There were six of them. I'll show a quick picture of her here now. There's two females. It was six puppies. Two females, four males. Here's the two females. I'll show you both. We still have to choose which one. I'm trying to wait for her collar to arrive before we go across on the ferry just to go look at her. Like I said, she's just born. She's not going to come home with us yet anyway, but I just want to pick out which female we're going to take. And yeah, so we're going to have three dogs in our new home. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's going to be crazy, but it's good crazy. I'm excited for it. I can't wait. But yeah, so here's a quick picture. If I haven't already showed it, it'll come up there now. There's that. So we're going to have three dogs, a female and two males. Um, Next on the pipe so yeah we should be into our home october 1st fingers crossed send best wishes down in the comments below we we, we need them we really do COVID kind of put a wrench in uh oh my goodness <coughs> <coughs> sorry i COVID kind of put a wrench in um oh made my eyes water in my schooling a little bit i'm back november 20th Going back in to finish the program I wanted to do. Oh my goodness, fingers crossed that all pans out really well. It, um, I don't know. I really want to do this. I do. I'm just hoping. Anyway. And yeah, that's everything for now. I don't know if you guys can see. Jersey's just back there relaxing. Hey, Jersey. Jersey's just relaxing on the couch. Ooh, you need to get groomed again. <laughs> cute and then Kenai is outside on the patio right now I can show you him ignore the garbage there <laughs> there he is hi Kenai hi babies but yeah there he is outside there's Jersey they love each other don't you Sometimes you play rough, but you love each other. Oh, okay. There's Kenai. <laughs> There's that dog. I try to get him outside a bit each day just for some patio time to get some fresh air. Roughly 20 minutes to a half an hour. He does enjoy it. He really does. He just wants to get in right now because I'm in here and Jersey's in here. He's not. I understand people say that Huskies can stay outdoors all day long. It will not be the case with our dog. Our dog is staying majority inside, except when we're out with him or he's out for his patio time or if we're out for a walk or what it may be. But in terms of him staying permanently outside, none of our dogs will be staying outdoors 24 seven. It's just, it's not happening. I'm not okay with it. I'm not comfortable with it. Other people may be, that's your choice and that's fine to each their own, but it's just not a um, personal preference of ours. So yeah, there's our doggies, and there's gonna be one more on the way. I'm so excited, I'm so excited for a little girl puppy, like, mm. And the weekend was absolutely phenomenal. Ryan ended up going up to my parents' cabin where they're building the cabin, and he got the truck 
off of my stepdad. It was my stepdad's old truck and he gave it to Ryan for free with the plow included, which is great. Ryan was so excited about that and so happy about it. So he's hoping to get his truck back up on the go where he still has to do the transmission of that one as well. Now he has this other truck that he's gonna fix up whatever it needs to be fixed. We know for a fact the brake line has to be done, so that's gonna be done and whatever else. And yeah, so there's that, that was great news. And we went to the track yesterday. I'll throw in a quick few clips of that here that I decided to take on my phone. that are really like just quick sparse clips. But anyway, yeah, he was out there. He replaced the gearbox on his buddy's sportsman car with one of now Ryan's other friend. I think his name is Carl. I could be wrong. I only met him like three, four times and not for very long, but I think that's his name. And he's great at showing Ryan how to do things mechanic wise that Ryan isn't a hundred percent sure on. So it's a great group of people for him to be surrounded by because it's the stuff he enjoys and loves doing. And yeah, so far all these people have been really nice, really welcoming, really warm. And this guy who owns the Sportsman also owns this legend that Ryan is really interested in buying. But uh, yeah, it's it's great for him. It's great for me, I love it. See, even though I don't think Targa's down here. This is my Targa shirt. <laughs> that Ryan bought me a few years ago when we actually went out to watch Targa here. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I just have such a good feeling about this group of people. They're just, like I said, it's a humbling, warm experience for both of us just to get in and around the different sportsman cars, legend cars. Ryan used to race hobby stock. I'm not sure if any of you knew that already, but if you do, yes, he used to race in the hobby stock class. And he wants to just branch out, try different things. He just wants to be surrounded by people who are interested in the same thing. And he just wants to be around people who can teach him and help him learn new things. So, you know, it's it's great. It's absolutely great. So, yeah, here's a few quick clips of him there yesterday out at the racetrack. watching this video guys hopefully now the next video will be uploaded before we move if not the next video you might see will be in our new house so we'll see anyway take care guys bye Mwah.